What's up guys, this is Poseidon Fishing Charters. I'm Captain Bryce. Today we're going over Fish Facts Shark Edition. We'll be going over the type of gear you need, the type of locations we need to look for, your tides and currents, and we'll also be putting out some different types of shark facts. So now let's get right into it. We're just showing an overview of tackle what we'll be using. We use a Florida Resolute 8000 series. It's connected to about 80 pound braid, and then we got a number six wire. I use a haywire twist. We use nine knot circle hooks. We connect it and get it onto the bottom because mostly we're bottom fishing for sharks. We use a two ounce weight and a extra large swivel. We also use Bull Bay Rod Series, extra heavy. That seems to do the trick. There's a bunch of different rods and reel setups that you can use. You can start off with your, you know, your pen senators, your six through nine knots to get out there and learn the basics of it until you want to move up. You got 50 wides, 80 wides, 130s, but that's for, you know, the big ones if you like to go paddle baits off the beach and uh, go send it out there and try to get a big one. So next up, we're going over a bait overview. This is a frozen cow nose. I caught a couple weeks ago. These are probably one of the best baits for, you know, bull sharks, hammers, and tigers. They absolutely love them, can't resist them. What we got up next, Next is we also got some Boston mackerel. They're not Florida native, but they still do the trick and do pretty good out there. We got ourselves a frozen bonita. It's a very good oily fish, super bloody. Sharks really love that. We call them poor man's tuna over here. We got ladyfish. You can catch these pretty much inshore everywhere. They're very big schooling fish. They're great for many different types of baits. And then there's also tons of different baits. You kind of want to match the hatch to the area that you're fishing. So if you see a lot of mullet around, you'd want to use some mullet. Jack Crevel are very good. Sugar trout, whiting, kingfish are excellent baits. Depending on your area, sometimes live bait is the key to it so if you go off the beaches sometimes we'll tend to throw live pup sharks out you go for real big sharks if you can get a live jack crevel live mullet they also work very well the fresher your bait is the better chance you have so the less time that your bait's actually sitting there frozen the better chance you'll have of catching a nice shark it's what you guys want to look for when you get out there on the water best places are deep shipping channels and types of passes so where water flushes in and out that goes from the bay to the gulf that's a very good spot to start targeting sharks time of day you guys also want to look for your dust and your dawns are your greatest chances at catching them you guys can catch them 100 percent throughout the day but the later and the earlier it is and toward the day that's when you got your best opportunity all right guys that's enough talk for now now let's get out on the water and see what we can do we're out here on the water we got ourselves a nice blue fish head and we're just using these circle hooks i will go right through this top of the meat right there nice solid hook right there you want to make sure you leave a little bit of hook exposure because if you go too deep in the bait like this you don't have enough room for a hook exposure you can't really get a shark like that you want to go right through top of the meat make sure you leave enough hook exposure so when they do pick it up you got all that hook hanging out during fishing in about 40 feet of water so we got a two ouncer it's all we really need out here not much current we get it right there we're fishing a shipping channel. We got big cargo ships, tugboats, barges that always come through here. So this is probably the deepest part of the bay. Sharks will tend to cruise around these areas. So we got grouper, snapper, flounders, a whole bunch of different food that they like to source off around here. So that's what makes this spot very unique and very good in Tampa Bay. When you guys are out here too, tides affect the bay fishing just a little bit. You can get sharks on incoming. My personal favorite is outgoing. All their juices and scent and blood are always shifting out. That'll bring those sharks that are out in. And when it's incoming tide, it'll bring those sharks in and make them come out. So my favorite's outgoing, but you can get them in either one. We got all our baits out. We're running three rods right now. Pretty much all we do is we let these baits soak on the bottom, wait for a shark to pick it up, and it's game time. I just put that bluefish head out. We're already getting a run. We're just letting them swim. And uh, when we think we got the hook good enough, we're gonna go ahead Put pressure on them, get that hook right in the corner of the mouth, just like a circle hook's supposed to. Yeah, there he is. There we go. And we're on, baby. We're doubled up. All right. Yep. Yeah, yeah Colin, I need a knife, quick. Hold on before you reel. Don't reel them anymore. Put it right there. Reel, 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 reel. We let that blue fish head sit out there. We're hooked up. We got another black nose shark right Come by the boat. Here. What we do when we land these sharks, these littler guys, you kind of want to grab them by the head because sharks have no bones in them. All they have is cartilage. They can turn around and bite you at any second. There you go, shark in the boat. Good, good. 
Go up to the front of the boat. Stand right there. He's just grab him by the front of the head, because if you were to grab him by the back of the tail, that's where I can turn around and snap your hands at any second. Yes. I got it. And that exactly is what you want to look for when you call a perfect hook set. Right there in the corner of the mouth, exactly what those hooks are designed to do. What did that now, I just broke my pliers. Uh, oh, God. Well, yeah, hold them down. Thank you, Danco. <laughs> it is right in his jawbone and making it very difficult. I got pliers, but they suck. I don't care. We'll break them, too. <laughs> He's trying to, like, shake. Look at him. Yeah. Yeah, no, we can't keep him, so we got to get him back. Right. There you go. Okay. Yes! And just revive him a little bit, Colin, if you want me to. Well, we had this shark out the water a little bit longer than we wanted to. So when sharks fight, they build up a good amount of lactic acid. So we're just going to sit there and run some water through his gills, make sure he's all right. Yeah. And a nice, healthy, safe swim off. He's good now. He's good. Yep. Nice and healthy, baby. Once you guys get that initial hook in it, you got your shark on. You don't want to go too crazy. You're not offshore pumping. You're not fighting for structure. So all you want to do is just Go nice and easy, pace yourself, make sure you keep that pressure on that fish. So when you hook sharks, they tend to head shake a lot. They're always shaking their head around, so you always just want to make sure you keep that good, nice pressure on them, because usually when they head shake, that's when you'll lose your fish. Pull hook, break off. Sharks, when you fight them, they're very sporadic. They change directions in a split of a second, so when you always have that pressure on them, it's much easier to be able to control that fish, get that fish to the boat, to the, to the land, to the beach, wherever you're at fishing for them. When you get a shark on the forefoot, you never want to grab them by the tail. So sharks are filled with cartilage. When you grab them by the tail, your head's up here. They can very easily snap around, get your hand, get your arm. So when you get sharks usually on their forefoot, you always want to go right behind the head, get a nice firm grip, and make sure you hang on tight. Once you get initial good hold on the head, that's when you can go for the tail, but you never want to end up going for the tail straight away. That's why people tend to get bit. It's usually by the little ones. The big ones are very more docile, much more tired when you get them to the boat. Thank you guys for watching. We had a great time out there. I'm glad we got to show you a step-by-step -step on how to actually get out there and catch sharks for yourself. And the best way, if you guys want to learn to get out there and actually catch some sharks, is to book a trip with Poseidon Fishing Charters. We'd love to have you guys out here. We'll be also more than glad to help you guys out there on the water and get some sharks for you guys to sell. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one.